Branch of Chair of Public Administration Legal Studies. This is the first 10 minute portion of our introductions. It's my honor and pleasure to open this particular forum tonight. I would like to introduce my wonderful boss, the Dean of Public Administration, I'm sorry, the School of Business and Public Administration, and my former student, not that long ago, <laughs> Dr. Annette Santos. Good evening. Half a day. I'd like to personally welcome you to the School of Business and Public Administration here at the University of Guam. Uh, this is indeed a very um, exciting event. Uh, we look forward to having a very constructive and informative um, session or forum today. Uh, as you know, uh, or may not know, uh, this is a student-driven event. Uh, so we're very excited about the things that our students um, engage in to promote awareness in our community about some of those matters that are very important to us, like, um, you know, like voting and uh, voting for the right candidate and finding their positions along, um, along the lines of um, politics. You know, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? Are you somewhere in between? Um, these are questions uh, that we'd like our students to begin thinking about. And so this event certainly helps to answer some of those questions, or at least gets them aware of some of the questions that they need to start thinking about as responsible citizens of our community. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome some important people that we have in the room. I only have less than 10 minutes, and so I'd like to ask the people that I call upon um, who were very instrumental in guiding our students uh, to please uh, stand and be recognized. We have with us uh, Dr. Ron McNich, who you heard from earlier. We have Dr. Ansita Walter. Dr. John Rivera. Professor Frank Ishizaki. We have uh, faculty members from across campus that we also want to recognize, uh, Professor Mary Cruz. Um, we also have uh, Professor Elizabeth Bellman. Uh, very near to us, we have the department chair of the Social Science and Criminal Justice uh, Department at GCC, uh, Professor Roberto. Other important leaders in our, on our island, uh, Director of DISID, Mr. Ben Servino. <laughs> Head of Guam Customs, Mr. Jim McDonald. <laughs> and two very key folks who um, made this event possible. Without their leadership, we would not have this event. I'd like to recognize Raphael Scambalori. Raphael is the president of the Public Administration and Legal Studies Club, also known as PALS Club. And we also have Mr. Leo Leogato. <laughs> Leo is the president of our Alpha Pi Sigma. I'd also like to welcome the media for uh, being part of this important event. Um, I'd like to thank our candidates for making the time to be here. I know how uh, important time is uh, lately for all of you. And most importantly, I'd like to um, welcome our students. Our students make up a, a good part of this, um, of this event. And so um, could I have our students just stand and be recognized? So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd like to call um, Dr. John Rivera to the podium to get uh, this evening's event started. Thank you for being here with us. Okay, thank you very much. So to, to my left is a podium that the candidates will use for this first section. The first section will be introductions. And the order of this, will, will, I'll call out the names of, of the candidates and they'll have a two minute introduction and they, they may use the podium to the left, right? So our first candidate will be uh, Governor Camacho. Right. And your timekeeper is right in front of you, right? Your time begins. Good 
Buenas noches, good evening. Maganda gabi sa inyong lahat. Tonight is an important uh, night for this election because it will be the first and perhaps the last time you'll be able to look at the four candidates for Congress side by side. You will find that on the issues, particularly the perennial issues that for years have remained unresolved, that all of us up here share the very sam similar positions. We all want war reparations for Manamco, better services for our veterans, more compact impact money, even on the more contemporary issues like the military buildup or Obamacare, while we may differ on the degrees to which we support or oppose these issues, the common thread is that we each stand up for what we believe is best for our island and our people. What I believe you will find distinct among us tonight is that the desire, first, is the desire to offer ourselves as candidates and open our lives to the scrutiny and rigors of campaigning. It takes courage, and we're all up here because we have that desire. Secondly, experience and years of service are beneficial because it says that we understand the process and have participated in it. Most of us up here have that experience. But effective leadership is marked by the results it brings. And I say, and I can say without hesitation, that I have a proven record of partnering effectively with the federal government and bringing tangible results. During my eight years as governor, we've worked with the federal agencies for example, the 2030 Federal Highway Plan, which brought in excess of $200 million over several years that have paved millions of, or rather hundreds of miles of road on, on island. We used, we built uh, four new public schools leveraging federal compact impact funds to finance the building of Okudu High School, Astumbo Middle School, League One Elementary, and Atikal Elementary School. The list goes on. We, we did low-income housing tax credits for the first time. So as we look at the issues before us, Look for people with experience and those with a proven record. Thank you. Thank you, Governor DeMasso. Our next candidate, Director Metcalf, would you please join us at the podium? Buenas noches, everyone. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Those of you who don't know me know that my nickname by now is Pudding. I am Chamorro. My husband and I have not only lived various times throughout our life here on the island, but we've enjoyed careers here. We've raised our sons here. We've owned and operated a business here on Guam, and our plans are to retire here. I am not a politician. Unlike most of the folks that are here today, I am a businesswoman, a successful businesswoman, mother, grandmother, and coach. I have participated throughout the years in bringing our story of Guam to people around the country, sharing with them how important we are. Last year, Governor Calvo asked me to work as his director in D.C. and as his liaison to the executive branch. He sent me with one directive, knock on doors and pound on desks, and that's exactly what I have done. I have built relationships with the new faces in Washington. I am helping to have them know more about us, who we are, where we are, and how important we are to the balance of power here in the Pacific. I am the only candidate on any ticket who has held no fundraisers. I owe no favors to anyone. The folks in DC know us as the tip of the spear. My dear friends, we are a lot more than that and we bring a lot more to the table. We can't waste any more time. We need to work together bring our concerns to Washington. Together, we can do this. Thank you. Thank you, Director Metcalf. And next, Congresswoman Berdalio. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Warm half a day to everyone. Uh, first of all, I do want to welcome the students here and to Dr. McNich for sponsoring this and putting us all together. Um, 
we have uh, been having a very uh, interesting campaign so far, and of course, we're heading toward the uh, uh, primary and we'll go into the general election. I do want to apologize for one thing before I begin my opening remarks, and that is I was scheduled to be on the vet talk tonight with Tom Devlin. I'm sure you're aware of that program. And I had made that commitment several, several weeks ago. And then when the forum came up, I had to make a decision. And uh, that's a very hard decision to make because uh, the veterans to me are very important. So when I talked to Mr. Devlin, he was very nice about it. And he said, he will schedule me, schedule me for another time. So I just want you to understand that. Sometimes we're in a situation where we have to make very difficult decisions. I want to say that I've been 14 years in the United States Congress. I've been quite successful with getting things done for Guam. When I arrived in Congress 14 years ago, they didn't know much about Guam. At first, they thought I was uh, a representative of Guatemala. I said, no, I'm from Guam. And over the years, I've invited over 100 members of the United States Congress to come to visit Guam. And they're so absolutely baffled at what they find, the progress here, the hospitality of the people. I worked across the aisle, which is very important in the United States Congress. We're just one seat, so you can't go in there being just a Democrat. You have to work with the Republicans as well. And I've been very successful at that. I hold leadership uh, roles and a ranking member in uh, the Readiness Committee in the Defense Committee, and this is very important for Guam. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congresswoman. And Secretary Bubalta. Thank you very much. It's nice to be back at the University of Guam. And uh, uh, thank you to the students for hosting this forum. The university is where I made significant investments as assistant secretary. I helped repair the field house, provided uh, funding for the uh, engineering school. It's uh, the home of my renewable energy initiative, my green army, and also uh, my assistance in helping promote the buy local initiative. You know, my competitor has talked about and touts her seniority in Congress. And there's no doubt that seniority means something in the U.S. House of Representatives. But I ask you, what's seniority without a depth of knowledge about these issues? What's seniority without substance on these issues? What is seniority without passion? I've spent 16 years in Washington, D.C., and, and I work with passion on these issues. And I've come home, and I want to use my experience from the Hill and as, a, as an appointee of President Obama to fight for Guam, to be Guam's main advocate in Washington, D.C., to be your voice in the nation's capital. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So the next portion of our event tonight is going to be a Q&A question and answer. And so this is a student-driven event and over 50 of our students got together with their professors and came up with a list of 10 questions that they feel uh, would best represent uh, some of the information that we would need to know or should know as voters out there or people that are interested in what happens to our island. And to read these questions, uh, we have two students, Edbert Santiago, who is a member, undergraduate member of our criminal justice program, and Rebecca Kassenbahn, who is a representative of our graduate school Masters of Public Administration program. Uh, all of these uh, questions that will be read and then answered are all in uh, random order, and we have that order, and we'll, we will uh, say that uh, momentarily. So to ask our first question. Good evening, everyone. So for the first question is, as delegate, how will you address concerns related to compact migrations? And each of our respondents will have one minute. Ms. Metcalf, you may begin. Thank you. First of all, the compact is over 30 years in operation. For over 30 years, we have suffered losses 
on a growing basis, every year going up. As of now, we have over $145 million. It is one of our biggest expenses. What we need to do is find a way to diffuse this impact, this negative impact. Two years ago, I recommended that we take a look at those people who choose to commit crimes against our people who are here as guests and choose not to follow the rules, not to follow the rules of the compact, and have now served time on multiple occasions that these people be addressed, be sent home, and allow us to use the $24,000 a day that we are spending now on those medical and educational issues that could be better served. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Babalta. Thank you very much. I'm going to scoop my chair up so I can see everyone. Um, thank you for the, for the question and for all the questions that are going to come up. You know, uh, one thing I forgot to mention that as candidates over the past two months, I mean, these issues should be uh, something that we're very fluid about, the compact, uh, compact migration and so forth, the other 10 questions. Uh, so, you know, in my discussions with people, um, you don't have notes and you don't have scripts. So the, the opportunity for this forum is just to have a conversation, and that's what I'm going to do. With, the, with respect to the uh, compact migration, you need a holistic approach. You need to get leaders involved, not just leaders on Guam and leaders in D.C., but get leaders from the freely associated states involved as well. You need a community approach. Uh, the FAS community is very, uh, a very religious community, and you need to approach pastors. Uh, and you need to stay firm on issues that you can stay firm on. Governor Calvo uh, started a commutation policy uh, several, a month and a half ago. It's something that I support. You need to stay firm on these sorts of policies, but you need to be compassionate to the community as well. Thank you very much. Mr. Camacho. A good friend of mine, the president of Palau, Tommy Ruingasau, was quoted as saying, the oceans of the Pacific do not divide us. They bring us closer together. If you think about the uh, migration through uh, FAS from COFA, Compacts of Free Association, into our island over the last several years, there are generations of children that are born and raised and they are m immersed and now part of our community. We need to work with Washington, D.C., Department of Interior, Insular Affairs, all the leaders of Micronesia. I formed with all the other leaders of Micronesia the Micronesian Chief Summit. The work that we've done there, collaborating together, working on issues that affect our island throughout have, have uh, resulted in, in, in many, many good positive things. We need to take a positive approach and realize that we are all part of a community here. Many people from different walks of life and different islands are calling Guam home. This is the island of opportunity. We need to work together and find solutions and make it work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Daly. Thank you very much. Migrants are an important part of our community and they have contributed much. And I, I feel that this is a forum, you know, um, I don't think we should be littling candidates for using notes. I don't think that's a proper thing to do. I increased mandatory funding from 4.5 to 30 million when I first came to, to Congress. And over the years, $3 million was set aside in discretionary funds, and now there's a new bill for $185 million, which will give priority to U.S. citizens for housing, uh, migrant children will be eligible for student aid, and migrants will be eligible for Medicaid. Thank you. 